everybody's talking about the government shutdown and the looming debt default. In fact, you can't really do anything without people talking about it, worrying about it, speculating about it. The problem is most people are talking about the wrong thing. Now, the shutdown is a problem, but in the short run, it's not a huge problem. Probably going to cost us several billion dollars, this shutdown. But several billion dollars, well, a huge amount of money, in the scale of a $14 trillion U.S. economy is not such a great problem. Now, if the shutdown goes for a long time, goes for more than a few weeks, then it starts to have great dislocations. Right now, people can't go to the national parks. But if they can't go to the national parks, and then suddenly the hotels and restaurants near the national parks start to fail and lay off their people, then you start to have cascading effects. If the NIH is shut down and suddenly research can't make a crucial discovery of a drug that would be a cure in the future, those are expenses that we don't even, or can't even calculate the cost of. So a long-term shutdown is disastrous. Being shut down for a week or two, not so terrible. So let's think about what people are talking about. People are talking a lot about the deficit. And that, of course, the deficit's a real thing. The government revenues are less than the expenditures, which means we're running a deficit. And we fill that deficit by raising money, by borrowing money from both Americans and foreigners to keep the, keep the government running. Now, that's a problem, because, of course, that means the government's taking in less revenue than we're spending. But honestly, if you think about this in a larger context, and you look at not just sort of the income statement, which is really what that deficit is focusing on, but also the balance sheet of the United States, which you recognize the United States is a fantastically wealthy country. We have assets, vast numbers of hugely valuable assets that we can use to generate cash. Now, we have grazing lands, mineral rights, air rights, ocean rights, gold at Fort Knox, tons of assets that we could use to generate cash. But it's politically unpopular for us to do so. It's actually politically easier for the government to just kind of continue running this operating deficit and borrow the money from foreigners to cover the shortfall. The reason the foreigners are so willing to lend us the money, though, is because they know that we have these fantastically large assets. We borrow money with the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, and everybody believes as long as we're promising to pay, we have all these fantastic assets, of course we're going to be able to pay back our debt at some point in the future. If we suddenly show them that our word is not good and that when we said we would pay those bonds, really just a joke, our Congress didn't allow us to, and so we're not actually paying them, we're going to default. A lot of U.S. people hold that debt, a lot of foreigners hold that debt. They're not going to be very enthusiastic about holding on U.S. bonds anymore. Now, if they just say they're not going to hold them at all anymore, then the U.S. suddenly has to go on a very big fiscal diet. In fact, has to run an operating budget immediately. If we run a balanced budget immediately, then we're going to have huge dislocations of the economy. All the things the U.S. government pays for, and state governments pay for, suddenly are going to be on the table and going to be slashed. That's going to be very damaging to the U.S. economy. And long term, the fact that the dollars, international currency, what trade gets done, and the credibility of the U.S. dollar, credibility of our ability to go to those markets to raise money in the future, is damaged. And so that looming debt default is something that could really hurt the U.S. and the U.S. economy. A shutdown for a few weeks, probably not a problem. And really, this focus on the deficit is just looking at the wrong target.